Hi everyone, I want to show you a new two-person game that's great fun to play. Every turn you put a dike and make a claim. Put a dike and make a claim. And that's why it's called Dike Claims. You can play on almost any size board. This is a 8 by 5 board. And this is the end of a game. This is a finished game. So I want to start at the end to explain what's happened. Here we have an opening from the sea to the sea. That's a river. And here's another one. Now this river is blue because the blue player put two claims in and won the river. And this one's red, one claim, red won that river. Here's another blue river. This river, two red claims, one blue claim, so red won that one. But here, unfortunately, there were two red claims, two blue claims, so this is just stagnant. This little thing is stagnant. This is stagnant, one claim each. And here, there's no opening to the sea. This is just scrubland. But blue put a claim in. And so blue won that scrubland. And here there's some more scrub, which red won. So how are the points actually counted? Well, first of all, there's a slight advantage for starting. So the player that goes second, in this case blue, gets a little bonus of five points. That depends on the size of the board. And let me put in the grid lines. In this river, there are one, two, three, four, five, six triangles. Ten here and two there. So red has 18 points for the rivers. Blue has 28, if you count those up. No score for stagnant rivers. And for the scrub, only half as many points. In fact, it's the number of little flowers indicates the score for the scrub. So blue has two scrub points and red has six. When you're playing, every claim costs one point. So from the scores you make from rivers and scrub, you have to subtract the number of claims you've made. So there are nine red claims and 12 blue claims. You have to decide if you want to make a claim or not. And that's how you decide who the winner is. Let's look at our five by five game. Now, when, the, when you start a new game, there is a number of dikes randomly placed on the board. This just makes every game different and unpredictable. In this case, we have nine dikes randomly placed. And the remaining number of goes is always an even number. So in this case, 16 remaining goes. Each player will have eight turns. Red started up here. Blue leapt in and got three points. Red put a dike here and had to make a claim. Let me show you why red had to put the claim in there. Otherwise, if red put a dike in there and a claim somewhere else, blue could have put a dike here and a claim in there and stagnated red's river. Blue down here.
Now that was move number 12, turn number 12. Blue put a dike there to try and get some points up here. And red has attacked this area. Blue put a dike across there. That's now cut off from the sea. And red wins. Let's look at an alternative version of that game. Same start as before. Now, do you remember last time, blue put a dike here and a claim up there. But this time, blue has seen that he could lose potential river up here. So blue has put a dike in there. Red puts a stop to that. And then blue cuts off that area. So it doesn't become red scrub, it's just like desert. No score for anyone. And this time, blue wins. So blue handled that part better this time. When you want to start a new game, just click on one of these buttons, small, medium, the number of dikes you get at the start is calculated according to the size of the board. So here we have 13 dikes, random start. For large board here we have 24, for giant board we have 48. So when you start a new game, red will be playing first here. If blue really doesn't like the way the random dikes are placed, blue, the second player, can say just once per game, no, I don't like that, start a new one. So if that was medium, start another medium, and then blue will have to accept that. Even though these are all medium, they do still vary in size randomly a little bit. Now there's only one slightly complicated rule in the game I haven't mentioned yet. Let me turn on the click help. It's Red's turn to put a dike and these circles indicate where to click to make a dike. So if Red wanted to put a dike this way, click here or here. And now the circles indicate where red can place a claim. Supposing red puts a claim here. Now it's blue's turn to place a dike. Blue puts a dike over here. Now it's like blue is working over here. Blue is working hard building dikes in this area and red has been working over here. So it wouldn't be very polite if blue put a dike over here and then tried to stick a claim in red's path. This is what I call a path here. And in fact, that's not allowed. This is called the competing claims rule. If you don't actually add to a path that your opponent has already claimed, then you're not allowed to put a claim in it. So this area has no claims. This area blue has worked on. Anywhere else, blue can make a claim, but not in here. Similarly, if red puts another dike here, red can add claims to its own path, but blue's path here are not available for red to make a claim. 
red puts a claim there. If blue wants to start putting claims over here, blue's got to do some work. Build another dike, and now blue can put a claim anywhere in that path. I hope that's clear. That's the competing claims rule. So if you're not sure about it, put on the click help. And if red, for example, here tried to put a claim in an illegal place, then you get a rude message. Sorry, competing claims rule. The other player has already made a claim in that path. You must extend it first with a dike to make a new claim. That's very clear, isn't it? Here's a six by four game. This could be called Don't Get Cut Off From The Sea. Red starts. Blue can grab a river there. Now red's looking quite strong here. And see what blue does. Now red can see is in danger of getting cut off. Red desperately puts a dike here, but blue cuts him off, puts another claim in here so that isn't scrub, it's just desert. So red has lost eight potential river points there by getting cut off from the sea. Let's have a look at something we might call a long river tussle. If, say, player A puts a claim in a path, and then player B puts a dike and another claim in the same path, and then player, player A does the same, so it goes A, B, A, B, then it all depends on who puts the last claim to finish the river. If player A puts the last claim, like A, B, A, B, A, A will have the most claims, and therefore A will win all the points of the river. But if B gets the last claim, like A, B, A, B, then the number of claims is just equal, and it's stagnant. So the advantage is definitely with the first player who puts a claim in a river. It's therefore not advisable for the second player to get involved in a long river tussle unless they're desperate or think they know what they're doing. Let's look at an example here. Player A has put a claim, or the first claim, in this path here. And player B, blue, decides they're going to fight over it. Now, it's a bit complicated here because if player A, red, puts a dike here and a claim, blue can make it all a desert. And if player A, red, puts another dike and claim like this, blue can make it all stagnant. So player a, red, is more likely to come over here. Now, the reason I put the click help on is so you, you can see that this is all one long path here. If red puts a dike here to extend the path, then it's free to put a claim anywhere along here. So red puts a claim there. Now, blue knowing that this could develop into a long river tussle, decides to keep it as short as possible, make this end open to the sea, and now it's two claims all. Red might think red, blue, red, or red, blue, red. Not much difference. Red goes there. And blue sees, if blue goes here, 
red will get the last claim. So blue doesn't want to go there. Blue goes here. And now red thinks if I put a dike here, blue will finish it and stagnate the whole thing. So red goes that way. And now blue thinks if I put a claim in there, uh, sorry, a dike in here, red will finish. And if blue puts a dike this way, red will finish here. So the game is up for blue. If blue is foolish enough to carry on, blue, red gets the whole river. Blue might take that one, red might take that one. Then with just over half the board played, blue is 13 points behind, pretty desperate situation. Here's a large game, eight by six, and it's red's turn. Let's see what red did. A dike over there, and then a claim up here. And what does blue do? Blue attacks. See, blue had a path here with two claims in. Go back. And red had this path here. Pro red was probably thinking, well, I'll put a dike there sometime. Keep safe, but left it too late. So blue's put a dike there and a claim there. And now red's in trouble. Red tries to get around here to join up with these two. But blue's having none of that. Now the potential river has gone into the sea here. Blue has four claims to red's two. So that's pretty hopeless for red, isn't it? Red just tries to sort of minimize the damage here by pushing blue There's the big river. If you go to the end of the game. Blue wins by quite a large margin. I'll show you what a double win is. Let's load a game here. Take those off. Run through quickly to the end. And it says double. So the blue score is at least twice the red score. And it's at least half of the board area. 6 by 4, 24, so it needs to be at least 12. 18 is greater than 12, so that counts as a double win. And what's the use of that? So a double win scores two points. If you're having a match, this is a suggestion for a match score sheet. These are the games. Medium board, large board, or giant board. So you can cycle through those three board sizes, alternate the player that starts, start up. And then for a normal win, you get one point, like here. A double win, you get two points. And a null game or a tie, zero points. So like this game was a tie or a null game. A null game is when no rivers have been made at all. No rivers have been completed. Five by three game here, and you're going to see a great blue town.
Now, blue has an advantage in points, but red looks fairly strong in the middle here. Let's see what blue does. Blue attacks both of these potential red rivers at the same time. What can red do? Red tries to save that one, but blue stagnates that one. So blue wins 8-5. I want to show you that even a small game can be quite exciting, quite interesting. This is a 4 by 3 game. This is the second smallest game possible. Just look what happens here. Blue has just won. Let's go back two turns. One, two. What did red do? Red wanted to make an opening to the sea, put a dike there, and to make this river safe, put another claim in. So instead of going there, red could go here. So now it's already got two claims in this river, and then red can put a claim in there. And now there's nothing blue can do, really. All the same, red wins. Let's go back three turns. One, two, three. So blue went there. What could be better for blue? How about here, here? Now, there's only two turns left to complete this path or river. So it looks like blue's forced it to be stagnant. If red goes here, red has to put a claim in here. Blue can go here, put a claim, stagnant. So this time, blue wins. Now go back four turns. One, two, three, four. Red went there. What else could red do? How about that? Now, what can blue do in response to that? Blue might force three claims here. Red can't win the whole thing. Red cuts off there, makes it safe. Red wins. Now, I thought red must win this, but my daughter who's only 14, only played the game a few times, came up with this move. There and there. Now that's more tricky for red. If red tries to cut off those two blue, put a claim in, but blue can stagnate it. Blue wins. In fact, the, the best that red can do is simply to stagnate itself and then blue still wins. So even a small game, four by three, it's still pretty exciting and unpredictable. There are a few things about the program I haven't explained yet. When you start the program, you get this screen. You can choose your board size. If you want to take off the grid lines and coordinates, you can turn those off. If you don't need these click helps, you can turn those off as well if you know where to click to get a dike, etc. Dike and claim. Dike. Now, if blue decides, oh, I don't like the look of that, I'll redo the dike. You can click there and go somewhere else. And then if red put a dike there and then decided, I don't need to put any claim, don't want to waste a point with a claim, say no claim. And then you don't get a point. 
deducted from your score. The replay panel comes here. You can go back, you can go to the beginning, to the end. In this case, it's not very far. Beginning or straight to the end. And you can save the game. Click here. And here we get just a simple text string that is all the data that's needed about your game. So control C or copy, and you can paste that into a text file. Here I am in a text file. That's the game string. I wanted to load another game. This is a text string for a 12 by 6 close but strange game. Copy. Now I say load. Paste that string in there. OK. 12 by 6 game. Leap to the end. That was it. Blue one. There are color options here. I've, I've kept the same colors throughout the video just to avoid confusion. But you might prefer some other colors. Green against blue. Green against mauve. It's a bit brighter. Red and green. Four different colors. Well, I do hope you'll try to download the game and have fun playing it. Go to the link in the description and download these files. There's the dieclaims.html file. That's the most important one. And then all of these JavaScript files and the little image an icon file as well. So if we put all of those into a folder and then drag this one into your browser or double click on that dieclaims.html file to run the program. I might add some sort of guide to the game as well in there. Let me know if you have any problems or any epic games. Thank you for watching and bye bye.